And we've seen this morning people moving across the Rafa crossing, uh, trying to get away from Gaza Strip uh, into Egypt. And we'll be bringing you more on that as it develops throughout the course of the day. But the front page of today's Sun newspaper highlights the reason Israel was forced to conduct this particular war. Uh, 32 innocent children currently being held hostage by the terrorist group Hamas are on the front page this morning. And more and more details keep emerging about the barbarity uh, of the terrorist organisation uh, in their attack on innocent Israeli civilians. But our state broadcaster still struggles to call them terrorists, which is pretty unbelievable. Uh, every time you hear the BBC now saying, uh, of course, Hamas is a prescribed terrorist organisation by, uh, by, some, some, by some governments, including ours, it really does seem to be ridiculous. Joining me now, though, to talk about this and some of today's other big stories is Ben Lazarus, Special Projects Editor uh, at The Spectator. Ben, welcome to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Nice to see you. Um, a very striking front page uh, in the, on the front of the sun today. Bring them home. 32 innocent children snatched by terrorists. This is why Israel must fight the evil of Hamas. One of the children is only nine months old. And it's sort of beggar's belief, really. You can't imagine what these parents are going through, um, what their, their relatives, their, their, their siblings. I mean, you don't know what conditions they're being held. We, we've seen some very sort of raw footage coming out of, uh, of some of the, uh, the Hamas uh, accounts, but we don't really know even if any of these kids are still alive. Mm. Um, I think it's quite a powerful front page for the sun to run, yeah. um, particularly in light of the amount of people that seem to be taking posters down around London and other cities in the country mm. of, of, the, of the hostages. Yeah. Um, and I think this, this front page sort of speaks to the, the silent majority that actually are appalled mm. by the fact that Hamas have, have taken so many hostages. I think it's around 230 in total of which um, a, you know, a large chunk of children. I, I should actually say I have a, a distant relative who is a hostage, um, Dietze Heimann. She's 84. She's a great grandmother. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously the families are, are, are devastated. And well, it's dreadful, know. isn't it? I mean, because this is the thing, we're just seeing some footage from what these tunnels actually look like, because what I'm told, um, uh, you may know this as well, is that the, the, the network of tunnels underneath Gaza um, is as big and as wide a spread, really, as the London Underground. Mm. And I so mean, you're not talking about a small area. No, not at all. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's around about 310 miles. Mm. Uh, at points, it goes about 230 feet deep. Mm. Um, it's a whole network. Uh, but within that network, there doesn't seem to be any bomb shelters whatsoever for civilians. They've just right. built this entire, um, as you say, it's something like the, the London Underground, right. except it's, it's, it's to, to launch a war. It's not to right. protect their And this civilians. is one of the criticisms of Hamas and the way that they run... Uh, Gaza in the sense that, you know, yes, they've got lots of money, but they don't seem to spend it on their own people. You know, they spend it on arming themselves, they spend mm. it on building these tunnel networks, they spend it on uh, smuggling things in which they can use to fire at Israel, basically. Yeah, and not least um, the leadership lining their own pockets. Mm. Um, I mean, the, the, the Hamas leaders living quite comfortably living in, in Qatar. Qatar. Yeah. You know, several of them are worth billions of pounds. Mm. Um, so there's something very, very uh, deeply ugly there. Uh, but what I think is, is particularly powerful about the sun front page and the, and the children is just how shocking a sort of war crime it is to, to snatch children. Yeah. But the thing that the thing that sort of bothers me most is when you're a child, time passes very, very slowly. Yeah. I mean, look, you and I, you, you and I, when, you know, the seasons come and go, you right. blink, it's Christmas, you blink, right. it's the summer. When you're a child, time passes very slowly. Mm. So the idea of these poor children, some as young as nine months, yeah. being stuck, um, underground. Just even away from their parents well, yeah. and familiarity because of most course. children are used to a kind of routine. You know, as a parent, you learn that the children like a routine. You can't suddenly give them breakfast at six o'clock one morning and then give it to them at nine o'clock the next morning. You know, they like to have it at the same time. They like to have dinner. Yes. They like to know their parents are there. They must be horrified at this. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're without daylight, stuck below ground. They'll be hearing bombs dropping around them. Um, it'd be all very unfamiliar. God knows what the conditions are like. And, and as I say, time must pass horribly, horribly must, slowly. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it beggars belief, you know, that we hear all the time now from the, the pro-Palestinian sort of lobby, if you like, that, you know, this, this didn't start on October the 7th. You know, this has been going for a long time. And yes, the conflict has been difficult. But I, I really don't see any equivalency between Hamas and the Israeli government, no matter what you might think about Benjamin Netanyahu, no matter whether you might think he's a bit too right wing, and many um, Jewish people do and many Israelis do, there is no equivalence between taking hostages like this. I mean, Israel has never done anything like this. Mm. Um, look, you know, there's, there's lots of reasons to dislike Benjamin Netanyahu. There's lots of reasons to dislike various things the Israeli government have done, mm. whether that's settlement expansion in the West Bank or, or anything else. But fundamentally, it is a democracy. And, yeah, I mean, the Israelis wouldn't dream of doing something yeah. like 